Okay, here's going to be a very quick and to-the-point video on the uh, the magnet rotors I've been working on because I figured out some dimensions and I just want to run them by you guys and, and uh, see what you think. <clears throat> um, and uh, without further ado, I'm just going to rattle off all the dimensions and I'm going to explain why on each one. I'm going to start with um, these three bolts right here. Um, they are doing two things. They are holding together the two quarter inch plates that are on there um, so I can make two identical magnet rotors but I do that that is how I grip it in the in the chuck jaws of the lathe and that is at exactly six and an eighth excuse me six and a quarter inch diameter um, a quarter inch it's quarter 28 hardened allen head um, bolts and I can grip that on the uh, the lathe chuck and then when it's in the raw form I'm able to hold the um, center, you saw a quarter inch center hole there on the other side and so I can I can machine this very very accurately as far as cleaning up the outside and boring that center hole. Now the outside diameter of this is seven and seven eighths across the diameter. Um, it's almost a perfect seven and seven eighths and then the center hole is one inch um, to fit the uh, the back of the axial flux and again this will come out the back of the axial flux. That's where the blade goes and that's where the, the axial flux alternator is going to go. So it's one inch out the back. Now, you see here I've got nine holes. Um, six of them are the mount holes that hold the two plates together. And it, it reefs the two plates together with a, a predetermined um, spacer that is machined to, to the, the gap of... Uh, in my case here, I have a half inch stator, half inch thick magnets, and about a one thirty second each gap on each side, right? And so, again, this is machined to hold the place together at exactly that place. And then when then you see the six bolts there, right? Those six bolts are these right here, okay? <clears throat> and then that will be in between. And then once these are pulled apart, that's how you're going to hold it together. The other three. Are the jacking points. This is 5 16th um, oops, coarse thread and what I'll do is I'll thread that out. I'm going to put a nut on the other side and uh, and then that will be MIG welded down to it and that way I can I can lower the two the one plate onto the other um, safely which is very very important with these things. Um, so that's that's those dimensions there that's one inch three inch diameter. Three inch diameter is also important um, because the stator, they're going to go on the inside of this, and that is three and a half inches, which is uh, my stator. I'll talk about the stator later. <clears throat> and then um, and then you have these little notches out here. These notches are set um, um, conveniently. Let me just focus there. That notch is also the same as, as this. That's just put in between. It's six and a quarter inch diameter um, there, and then out here we are at um, seven and six hundred and fifty thousandths actually that's just where I landed on that um, because I once I cut this out on a plasma torch I have to grind off and you know start by you know hammering off the slag grind it off and then I machine it down and it comes to right about there and now I know I know more or less where I'm I'm gonna stop there on the edge of that circle but the other thing about six hundred and fifty thousandths um, seven and say six hundred and fifty thousandths diameter is the distance between these two holes once you get out to the edge there um, on center is about exactly one inch and my <clears throat> my uh, 5c collet index has 24 stations so they don't go all the way through they just kind of you know it's a very quick operation I can get through there it's a great time savings again these are two plates bolted together and I've got that going through both sides. Now the only other thing I want to point out is, you see that one hole there? That one, excuse me, that one there, uh, goes all the way through. That's the way when I unbolt these two and I put them around, they're the mirror image of each other and they are they are a pair, they're, they're made together and they're a set, right? <clears throat> and now I've made two more of these. And this is all for the, uh, uh, the, the dual magnet axial flux wind turbine I've been working on with Muddy and uh, as you can see, there's the uh, the bare bones unit, which I'm going to sell on eBay for one dollar no reserve. You guys are all going to have a chance to, to.
to nav this thing. <clears throat> um, this is on my front burner right now as far as the project goes. And um, there's the one that I've been flying. I took it down because I need to make it a substantial tower that requires a, a separate video all by itself. But that's that. And I just wanted to show you the rotor on this video and, and have you guys just wrap your heads around this um, and how all this comes together. Uh, the um, Any comments, questions you may have? I don't know that I'm the guy that answered the questions. I, I, I know there's a lot of science involved in this. And I'd love to hear your opinions. I mean, really good banter about this and these dimensions. Um, this uh, this dimension here, um, the size seven and seven eighths diameter. These three holes at six and um, and a quarter inch, and all of that works perfect for um, <clears throat> for, for my machine tools. And it almost represents the maximum size that I really want to work with accurately. So I um, I can go bigger, but it would just it would be inefficient. It would take more time and all that other good stuff. So um, this is this is about the perfect size. And plus, as you go bigger, the rotor size um, in ratio gets so much larger that the tower and everything else you know that goes along with it gets kind of toward the extreme. And uh, and already this turbine. Um, with the blade set on it, tail, everything, everything set is like 40, I forget what it was, 42, 43 pounds. Um, it's pretty heavy. And when the thing gets spinning fast, you know, you, you need a serious tower on that. So um, with, with gang wires and everything else. So anyway, quick video, just wanted to show you the rotor and, um, and the things, the things that, uh, that we figured out so far, at least what I've done so far with this, and I'll just tell you, this is the, the important information that you guys all like to know about is um is dimensions of things again these are one inch by one inch square magnets half inch thick and 42s the center of the magnet sweep is six and a quarter inch there are 12 magnets north south of course and the stator um, is very similar to this one except on this stator there are elliptical coils and they are, I believe, 150 turns of 18 gauge wire. And that gives me 12 volts, excuse me, gosh, what was it? It was like 14 volts open at around 120 RPM or thereabouts. It, it works well. And uh, as you can see here, if I, if I get this, this guy going, boom. It is very efficient. I mean, I, I understand why people are making these things. So that's, that's where we are. With this, I really like this setup. I like the thin stator. I like the thick magnets and everything else. So that's where I am, and uh, where I need to be with that whole arrangement. Well, you know, you, you guys can just pipe up and just let me know what you think. You know, um, on on that again, um, within my tools, I'm already set for 24 positions there. But you know, you can still do it the old-fashioned way. You can do the 15. Um, 15 coils, 20 magnets, or whatever have you, you can do, you can change things up there. Um, so there you have it. Um, a real quick one. Just wanted to chat about what I've been doing and I'll probably spend the rest of the day making, uh, making rotors today. So thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate your input. I really do. Um, so thanks again. Make a comment for sure, no matter where you are or what you know. And until next time.